Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be addressing two issues that I had. If you saw my previous video, I had some complaints about a few things with this bike. One was the fenders here. Um, I don't really like that there isn't full coverage on the fender. The rear fender tends to make a rattle type noise when vibration comes from the motor up through this um, rack in the back here and into the fender. So I don't really need fenders. I don't really ride in the rain and I don't, care too much about the dirt kicking up you know when i'm going on trails and whatnot it's not a big deal for me i do kind of like the look of the rack as far as the uh, durability of it but i don't need a rack i won't be carrying anything back there and um, as far as the front chain ring here i'm not going to put a double guard on it yet but if i keep having issues with that chain coming off i might do something like that in the future um, when i do take this fender off here the light seems to be fairly tight when I tighten it down, but I have another solution, which is this little uh, nut that has kind of a star pattern on the backside. I'm gonna bring this closer so that you guys can kind of see that. Hopefully it's not too close for the focus. I'm just gonna slowly bring it in. But if you can see, there's kind of a pattern on there of grooves. And what that does is that allows, uh, I'll put this on the backside here of this bolt and tighten that on and that should kind of keep that nice and tight and keep it from loosening up over time. The other option is to use a lock washer. I didn't happen to have a lock washer of that exact size, so I'm not gonna do that today. Uh, but I think that just tightening it down, even with the bolt and uh, nut that's on there should be good enough. But I'm gonna use this kind of, uh, like I said, grooved nut with the flange on the end of it, just to kind of hold it together a little bit tighter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is flip the bike over and I'm gonna remove the two nuts and disconnect the power to the motor. There's a connection joint there I'm gonna separate. So in case you're wondering, this 3 um, socket that I have, this deep socket is for taking out spark plugs, but it's actually the perfect size uh, for this rear nut on the back wheel. So in case you're wondering, 3 16ths is the size. So as you can see here, interestingly enough, they use the exact same nut on the wheel with that same type of pattern to hold it from coming loose. So they probably should use that on the front light, I would assume as well, would definitely hold that together a little better. You can see the same on the other side. There are some zip ties that are holding this wire to the connection here. Oh, that's actually a little loose. I should check that. But I'm gonna have to cut these two zip ties and then re-zip tie it together. Now, one thing you wanna make sure of is when you take this wheel off, don't touch the rotor to the brakes. That'll cause more squeaking and squealing. You get your oils from your body and your hands on it and it starts to make noises as you brake. So you don't wanna to touch that brake rotor on the other side if at all possible. Okay. So now we have this power wire connect disconnected from the motor. The next thing you'll want to take off, and don't get these confused because they are different. They are different sizes. You have the thinner washer and you have the thicker washer with this little nub right here on the end. And that prevents the wheel from rotating under power. Be sure that you put the thicker one with the nub on it on the side with the rotor. So the kickstand side of your bike, the opposite side of the chain. The thin one goes on the chain side of your bike. The thin washer, chain side of your bike. And that's it. Okay, now we have access to the fender to be able to tighten the bolts. So I'll go ahead and bring out my Allen key set here. So those aren't very loose. Okay, this one was a little tiny bit loose up here, up front. Uh, but this one back here was not very loose at all. So now... I can still hear the rattling. So I think I'm gonna avoid putting this all back together, taking it out for a ride to see if it's rattling. When I first got the bike, I didn't notice the rattling as much. 
So, you know, if you do want to keep these fenders on and you are having issues, what I'd recommend is getting a rubber washer and putting it in between this bolt here and the washer behind it and your fender, as well as maybe one on the other side that attaches to the rack and that attaches to this rear fork. In that way, you'll prevent any additional rattling. See, that just, it just bothers the crap out of me. You know, I'm not, I'm not interested in those noises. So for me, I'm personally just gonna take these off at this point. I was gonna go out and test it, like I said, but you know, I just really am not interested uh, in wasting the time to do that. You know, uh, I feel like it's not a big deal. Maybe a lot of people don't care, but you know, when you're riding your bike around, you're hearing noises and stuff. It's just kind of embarrassing. People are like, what is wrong with that guy's bike? You know, to be making that kind of noise. And it's not a big deal. You know, it's not anything wrong with the suspension or the motor or anything, but those vibrational noises like that just drive me crazy. I'd rather the bike be uh, quiet and stealth and I, like I said, I don't really care much for these fenders anyways. Um, I always take fenders off of my bikes, uh, especially mountain bikes like this, because, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't ride in the rain and I also um, don't really care about the dirt coming up. You know, if it's mud, it's kind of annoying, but I mean, you're out riding your bike, you know, <laughs> you're going to get a little dirty. You go home, take a shower. It's not a big deal. If you do ride in the rain a lot, you know, or you do go in some heavy mud or something like that, you know, fenders help. But to be honest, like this front fender here, it's not going to keep much mud off you because there's still all this room here for the mud to come through. So, you know, it's up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and just remove this fender because to me, it's just not necessary. It's interesting. I just noticed there's a small washer on this underside here uh, of the rack, but there was not one, as far as I could tell, on the other side on the fork. So... There, were, there was bolts going through with washers into the fender and then on the underside or the, I guess that would be technically the top side of the fender there was one here on the rack in between the rack and the fender so just something to be aware of I would replace this this washer here with a rubber one and that would probably prevent a lot of this vibration if you intend to keep your fenders on your bike which I don't so at this point we're actually ready to put the wheel back on because like I said I can take the rack off with the bike flipped over and it won't right now it's sitting on the rack so i'm going to do that when i get it uh flipped back over okay so main thing you want to remember too or not main thing but a very important thing do not squeeze your brakes while the wheel and rotor are off the fork it's very important if that happens you, with hydraulic brakes you'll push those pads together and then you won't be able to fit the rotor back in between them um, when you buy the bike in the front there's actually a plastic spacer that goes in between those pads in case the front lever gets hit because the back one's already installed. So in case that front brake line gets squeezed, it doesn't compress those together and then you don't have to, you know, force them back open or, you know, bleed the brakes or do anything crazy like that. So just be aware of that. When it's in this state like this, you do not want to squeeze those brake levers, whatever you do. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this wheel back on. Now the hard part here is you need to lift it up and above so that the cassette is connected to the chain like that. And I wanna actually get it to go a little on the outside there of the chain. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and line that up. And that's it. It's actually relatively easy. Uh, I know a lot of people are worried about taking their rear wheel off like it's a kind of a hassle. It's really not that big of a deal. Okay, and then we just do everything in reverse. So we'll get those two washers. One's thicker, one's thinner, and one has that nub on it. Okay. Remember, the nub side goes on the side with your brakes. And that nub, when you look at it, you'll see what I'm talking about, goes into a little groove and it keeps everything from rotating. This side goes on and just pushes in like that, okay? You can kind of maybe see in the camera, I don't know if you can, but there's a little groove opening right here. There's the same thing on the other side. Okay, and then the next thing you want to do is reconnect your motor so that you don't forget. It's relatively easy to do. You just push it together and then you turn the two metal connectors together and that tightens them back up. It's actually relatively easy. Okay, 
I noticed mine was a little bit loose, so you may want to check that on your bike and make sure that uh, the connection hasn't kind of rattled apart. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip tie these back on to keep this from kind of moving around anywhere. I think just one zip tie will be enough. There was two, but I think just one right here on this little groove will hold it together just right. Okay, next you want to put your two nuts back onto the bolts, one on each side. They're both almost identical. And again, they have that kind of star-like kind of, I guess, pattern or whatever you want to call it. Put those on each side. Kind of hand tighten them down. All right, and then grab your socket. I prefer socket over a crescent wrench. A crescent wrench will do it, but if you slip or if you have a cheap socket or a cheap crescent wrench, it's very easy to strip these bolts and then they get more and more round and they get harder and harder to work with. I prefer a socket if possible at all times. This is a 13 16th. Again, that's the size I'm using. Seems to fit just right. Go ahead and tighten those back down. And you want them tight, but not, you know, you're not trying to crush it, but make sure that it's tight. You know, put some extra torque on them, kind of double check them. Okay, that's pretty much it. We're ready to flip it back over. There are also these rubber covers that are great. They keep those nuts and the bolt from kind of rusting over time and protects them from, I guess, scratches and whatnot. Kind of push those in there. Same thing on the other side. All right, we're all set. Now, the only other thing I need is that zip tie on the motor, which I'm gonna have to go upstairs and grab a uh, zip tie from my collection here. But we're ready to flip it back over. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this front fender here. I'm glad to get this fender removed. I just don't like the look of them. And I don't like the extra noise that comes along with using them, to be honest. Especially metal ones. Plastic ones aren't great either, but at least they don't rattle and make a bunch of noise. I'll try and do this without losing anything here. down here. I was wondering if I would need to remove my wheel, but it looks like it clears. Okay, so now we have the light with the bolt. There's a washer, and then there's the nut. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use that other star threaded nut that I have right here. And I wanna show you guys the difference here very quickly. But this is the difference between the nut. Okay. Now the only difference is this is a locking nut and this is a kind of like a threaded lock nut. I guess, I don't know what you would call this um, star pattern type of lock nut. This actually has a rubber kind of grommet inside to lock it as it tightens. So either one probably will work, but I'm going to go with the one that is similar to what's used on the rear wheels. And if that gives me any problems, um, then I'll just go ahead and... So there are two washers. Uh, and one is to go in between the fender. So what I'm going to do is remove that. We only need one on each side. So uh, washer is going to go, it's going to be bolt, washer, mounting bracket of the light. And then on the other side, I'm going to put uh, just the, the nut itself with no washer because the washer will make it slide around. Okay, so I'll put this through the light. Then I'll put the bolt through here. And I'll put this lock washer on the back side here. All right, it already feels much better, to be honest. But I will keep that extra locking nut uh, that came with it just in case I have an issue with this one. I can go back and, you know, switch them. Oh yeah, that's tightening so much better than it was before. Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. I can tell you right now, that's that ain't going nowhere. I mean, that's on there.
okay? So that's great. Um, that's exactly how I want it to be. Make sure it's centered. Looks good. Okay, so we got both fenders off. You saw how easy that was. I am gonna keep these fenders just in case I do change my mind. Even though I know that I won't, but just in case I do, or in case I decide to sell it, you know, and I wanna put it back to stock. So let's take a look at the bike itself. What do you guys think of the look without the fenders? I think it already looks better myself. It looks more aggressive. I really like the look of the bike without the fenders. You can see the tread on the tires a lot more, especially looking down at it. It just really kind of gives it a more aggressive look. What do you guys think? I mean, it looks, I like it like that, to be honest. And I don't think there'll really be any issues. So here's the light. I mean, it's a little wobbly because it's, it's kind of long, a little, little bit of a flop to it, but it's, it's solid. It's not as loose as it was before. And the main problem was if you hit the fender, bumped it at all, it moved everything because it was all compressing together. Now you just have this nut here and you have that bolt with the washer and that's it. So there's a lot more friction, a lot more tightness, but I really think that that looks a lot better. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Are you going to remove your fenders? Do you plan to remove your rear rack? So I'm not hearing hardly any noise from that rack. I'm almost tempted to leave that rack, to be honest. Hmm. You know, I'm almost tempted to leave it. Because I don't, I don't hear as much rattling. A little bit, maybe the light, but I don't hear any of the rattling that I heard before. So I'm almost tempted to go take it out for a ride and then come back. And if I still don't like it, take it off. I just think it'll look so much better without that rack there. And again, I don't plan to use it. The only problem is I'll have to relocate this light. So, um, yeah. And the problem with this light and the cable to relocate is it'll have to come up and then it'll have to go over this hinge and up the seat and it just won't look very good. I'm almost tempted to just leave this right now, to be honest. You know what? Let's go take it out. Let's go see how it does as far as noise and vibration and see if we still hear that vibrational noise that seems to come from the motor at low speeds up through the rack and into the fenders. So no fenders, but the rack is still there. Let's go give it a try and see what it sounds like. All right, guys, so we're testing out the uh, 2024 Wired Freedom here at the lake without fenders. I can tell you just from the quick ride over here so far, that low speed, hear that? It's pretty cool, huh? That low speed kind of grovel from the motor when it goes whoa, as it starts going, uh, tended to make like a vibrational noise. You probably heard it. If you haven't, check out my previous video where I go over the three things that I don't really like about this bike, uh, which was the fenders, the front chain ring the the chain comes off once in a while not very very often not a big deal and also that the rear rack and fenders make a lot of noise when you uh, go over bumps or when you have vibration coming from the motor at that low speed so um so far i'm loving it without the fenders and without any um rear fender mostly the front one didn't seem to make any noise or issues but it did uh it did tend to move a lot with the light and then it would move the light over to the side and then the, the light would be wrong and whatnot so uh, and also don't forget i didn't show it on video but i did do this before i left which is put your zip tie back on this wire here make sure your connection's tight and make sure you put a zip tie to hold this you could probably get away without having it but it might catch on something it's good to just keep it up and out of the way Again, I'm gonna leave this rack for right now. I haven't heard much noise from it. We're gonna go out to where I was in my previous video by the lake, and we're gonna see if we get any noise from it. So, so I don't hear any of that vibrational noise. Again, when I get out to the lake, I'll put my mic uh, towards the backside of the bike so you can hear if any vibration or anything like that has happened. But I'm not hearing any of the noises I used to hear, even on flat ground with that first start of the motor, whoa, kind of kick. It'd make everything kind of just do a light vibration which isn't really noticeable unless you have something like a fender that vibrates to amplify that noise. All right. I gotta tell you guys, so far I'm loving it. 
there might be a little bit of sand in my shoes, a little bit of dirt kicking up here and there. You know, if I see water, I gotta slow down a little bit, but I'm okay with all that to not have to deal with fenders. I just don't like them at all. Well, here's an example right here, some muddy water, just go around it. Now, the brakes are still squeaking. I think I'm gonna eventually get some brake clean on those rotors. I'm pretty sure it's the rear rotor, which I didn't touch at all when it was, you know, shipped to me, it was shipped assembled. So might've been when they assembled the bike uh, in the shop or at the warehouse that they, somebody accidentally touched that rotor or got some oil or grease on it to make it make that squeaking. The problem is once you get that oil compound onto the brake pads, it kind of soaks into the brakes and it's really difficult to make it not squeak again. Even if you clean the rotor with like brake clean or something like that, you're still gonna end up hearing that squeak most likely until you change the pads. And then at that point, you're gonna wanna clean the rotor and you're gonna wanna um, also put new pads on at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and let this horse go by here. How's it going? <laughs> Have a good one. All right. So like I said, people take horses out here and they, they ride to the lake. It's really cool. I always give the animals the right away because, you know, I can stop. It's not a big deal. What does it take me? 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds at the most. Listen to that though no noise over these bumps oh man that's what i wanted so it's not the rear rack that is the problem folks it is that rear fender could have been a little bit of the front fender but i really think it's that rear fender how it attaches to the rear rack there's two metal washers one on each side and i think those should be rubber if those were rubber it probably wouldn't make that noise now it would probably wear out over time and deteriorate and maybe that's why they don't do that but I think as far as um, noise, I'd rather have no noise and have to replace that washer every once in a while than to have something where um, you're gonna have that constant rattling noise going on and no, boy, this is just a little thick here. Let's get out of these before we pop a tire. Uh, I'd rather have a rubber washers there that might deteriorate over time but make no noise rather than have you know these fenders that are constantly rattling boy that sounds good and making all this noise to make your bike sound like it's like broken you know or something's wrong with it i just it bothers me now the brake squeaking okay you know yeah that bothers me too i want to get that fixed and i will at some point like i said i'll probably clean the rotors i'll probably put new pads on i can identify that i know exactly what it is you know i've had other bikes that do the same thing usually most bikes are shipped with pretty cheap uh, brake pads to save money and to keep the price down um, I plan on getting some decent like Shimano's for it at some point and when I do that here's some loose sand right here just goes right through it and I'm not really getting any dirt kicking up on me you know a little bit's coming up onto the motor here but it's bouncing right off of the frame uh, as long as you're not going in like wet mud I don't think it's a big deal uh, but like I said I'll probably replace these brake pads with some better ones at some point and when I do that I'll clean the rotor at the same time both front and rear and put the new pads on and that should be gone. Bed them in properly and you shouldn't have an issue. Um, I've had multiple bikes that have that same problem. And electric bikes like this tend to go through pads really quickly because, you know, you have a lot of power and a lot of extra weight. So, folks, I don't hear any noise. Do you? Now, to me, that's the way the bike should sound. The bike shouldn't be making all this rattling and crazy noises. You know, a little bit of brake noise, okay, that's, you know, pretty common. But it shouldn't be going and like rattling and doing all that weird stuff. So you know what I'm going to do for now? I think I'm going to leave the rear rack on because it doesn't look bad. It could come in handy at some point and it has the light attached to the back of it. So. And it's fairly sturdy. I mean, the way that it mounts with these four bolts, there's no vibrational noise coming from it. Um, you know, I will say I did hear a tiny bit of my kickstand when it's up 
like this, there's a little bit of that. It'll go down and up, but it's like, that's not a noise that really bothers me. Um, and it's not very much, it's only on really big bumps. But like I said, I think the main culprit was the rear fender with the motor vibrating, going up through the rack into the fender. I just think it looks better. The tires look more aggressive in my opinion. And the bike just, I think it just looks so much better. It would probably look even better if I took that rear rack off. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Should I do it? I know a lot of people like the rack. I know a lot of people like to carry stuff with them when they ride. I don't because I'm riding in terrain like this where, you know, what am I going to be carrying back there that I need, first of all, and it just doesn't make sense. It's going to be flopping and bouncing around. You're really going to have to secure the crap out of it so it's not flopping and falling and bouncing and, you know, causing a problem with whatever you're carrying back there. But I think the bike looks much better. I really like the look of those tires without the fender covering them. They just look more aggressive. The bike looks more like a mountain bike to me. I know it's a cruiser style bike, fat tire, but I think it just looks much better in my opinion. One final thing I want to mention, I did a video about setting up your rear suspension. I'm still seeing that I'm using quite a bit of my rear shock. Um, that's still a little bit more than I would be comfortable with with using as I ride this stuff here. I'm not, I didn't even go off any huge jumps or anything like that. So I'm going to put a little bit more air in this shock. Um, so keep an eye on that too. One other thing I noticed that you may want to also keep an eye on is this front fork. Uh, I noticed it was a little wobbly when I would kind of go like this. I was like, what is that wobbliness? Um, be sure to check this lever right here and make sure it's tight. So, you know, undo it. You can tighten it from the other side a little bit and then push that through. There should be some force to kind of push that down. You don't want that to go easily and you want to make sure your wheel isn't wobbling back and forth. You know, you don't want any movement side to side, obviously. So. Other than that, I'm really happy. I'm stoked that that noise is gone because it was really starting to bother me. Um, you know, it may not bother other people. You might really want the fenders. If so, put those rubber washers, find some rubber washers and put those, you have to take your wheel off like I showed you and put those in between the rack and the fender. Same thing on the backside. Um, you don't need it on the side of the bolt head. You just need it in between the fender and the rear fork and the fender and this bar right here on the rack and that will reduce a lot of that noise make sure they're really tight and you shouldn't have any other issues but other than that guys i think that's going to be it for this video stay tuned for the next one i'm going to ride this bike down to uh, Folsom which is about 20 minutes away from here and there's a really cool spot that i found that is uh, i think over 100 years old and it's a chinese um, place where they did some mining where the where Chinese people wrote even on the walls and everything and it's I don't want to give away too much but check out my next video coming after this one it's gonna be a really cool one and I'm gonna try and check out some other spots around town that uh, have some history to them and are just really unique and interesting so thanks for watching be sure to leave a comment down below I'll respond to all comments if you have any questions if you're not sure about a size or a part or something about the bike let me know I'll see you on the next one